Good afternoon, friends and family in the HPC AI ML world. Lisa Martin here with Dave Nicholson. We are live at Supercomputing 23 in Denver, Colorado. This is midway into our third day of four days of wall-to-wall -wall cube coverage. We're going to be having a great conversation. You've been hearing us, if you've been watching this this week, talk a lot about Dell and Broadcom. We have two alumni back with us, Dave. We're going to be digging in deep and the show and tell. Please welcome back Hemel Shaw, Distinguished Engineer and Architect at Broadcom, and Jim Winian joins us as well, Senior Product Manager at Dell. Guys, welcome back, great to have you. Thank you, yeah. happy to be here. Happy to be Good here. Good to see you. And you guys just did a presentation together, so you're all warmed up, ready to go, you're locked and loaded for this conversation. That's right, that's right. Awesome. Yeah. And we'll talk about, there are a lot of players involved in AI, AI ML networking technologies. What is, from Broadcom's perspective, what's new and exciting in the networking space, and then Jim, we'll have you kind of, kind of weigh in on the Dell partnership. Sure. Yeah, so Broadcom, we have been doing Ethernet networking for decades now. What is exciting with the AML is, is pushing the envelope, bringing really large scale clustering, asking for high bandwidth, and what we have is both in terms of our NICs and switches, we have our solution today, and we are innovating with other things around ultra Ethernet, where we are putting more intelligence in network infrastructure in the NIC to make AI ML solution for net, from networking standpoint the best. Jim, comment it's very on that. Exciting. Yeah, very exciting. Jim, comment on that from Dell's perspective. It's a crowded space. It is a crowded space. Why the Dell Broadcom tight, better together partnership? Well, it's always best to work with the lead, the lead dog. So that's where Broadcom <laughs> comes in on the technology side. We're very excited. We've been partnering with them for literally decades. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's, it's always exciting to see what they're, what they're brewing up. And so we've been like supporting the Tomahawk line, the, to the top of the food chain for hyperscaler networking solutions. Uh, the Trident line, the top of the food, the food line for uh, enterprise solutions. Uh, we have switches in those lines and we continue to work with them. Uh, having the discussion about where do we go next, what did we just do, what worked, what didn't. So all of those things, yeah. So, Hamel, I like you for more than just your Knicks, just to be clear, <laughs> not, you know. You That's know, a compliment. Uh, I know Jim, I know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know Jim when he says top dog, he means, that <laughs> he means it affectionately. <laughs> so so we're, we're talking about, you know, we, we've been talking a lot about networking and connectivity. Um, this specifically is uh, what you might term inter-server networking specifically. Absolutely. Um, when you use the term ultra ethernet, What's the difference between ultra ethernet and just plain old garden variety ethernet? Right, so what we have today is garden variety ethernet. On top of that we have Rocky as a RDMA transport. People are using it. It's, it's good and it has served its purpose for the scale that is being deployed today. With ultra ethernet what we are doing is keeping the same ethernet ecosystem infrastructure but adding things like multipathing, adaptive routing, congestion control mechanism which scale to large number of nodes. Also addressing some of the rocky transport deficiency means RDMA goes to the next level by having selective retransmissions. So all of those together with the physical infrastructure of being Ethernet, that's the ultra Ethernet. Can we, can we get right to what you brought with you? Because sure. I, I'd hate to show it at the end and then <laughs> we'd have all sorts of questions we wouldn't be able to ask because of time. Uh, hopefully, sure. hopefully we can get uh, some tight shots on that, maybe a camera over here. What, what, what did you bring with you, so what do you have? On my left is Jericho 3 AI. This is for AI fabric market, 100 billion plus transistor, top of the line, switch chip. On my right, I have a Tomahawk 5, which is 64 ports of 800 gig. Again, top of the line switches. Both of these together allows you to do multi-stage -stage switching fabric for AI ML. So, really glad to see this. These are both production, and it's being deployed in production. And the way, and just to be clear, the way that these actually are implemented, they are they would be in an enclosure, in switch, uh, yeah. rack mounted as a, as a switch with with the ports in the back. So to kind of familiarize right. people right. who are in data centers who maybe don't get down yeah. to that level of uh, componentry. How does that partnership work uh, with you? I, I was yeah. just going to jump in. Let me brag, yeah, yeah, yeah. brag yep. for for uh, <laughs> uh, Hamel and, uh, and Broadcom. This is the top of the industry right now. 
you can't get any faster, any better than, than what he's holding in his hands. I'm, I was telling him, I'm so impressed he was able to wrangle these out of the hands of the engineers to actually show it to, the, to uh, everybody here, so very cool stuff. Um, we are very excited uh, to be partnering again uh, with the Tomahawk 5. We have a Tomahawk 4 already shipping. Tomahawk 5, well I can't release dates and that kind of stuff, but let's just say we're looking very closely at what's, what, when we can uh, do something there. So um, having a, you know, high capacity, a bunch of 800 gig ports uh, on top of uh, 400 gig ports, um, critical. Absolutely critical for advancing the AI ML fabric solutions. So I'd love to get your perspectives on differentiation and, and obviously this is incredibly powerful and potent what you just shared with us and I saw they were able to get it on camera. How, how is that leading edge, top of the market, talk about that as, as especially with, with Dell and Broad come together and both of you I'd love your answers. How does that differentiate you guys in that space when you're in customer competitive situations? So, uh, I'll start and James, feel free to jump in. So what we bring in is end-to-end -end networking components, right, from the silicon standpoint, and then all the infrastructure software that is needed uh, in order to make that end-to-end -end connectivity and networking going. Partnering with Dell, what we do is also move up the stack in the system level. So that's where end-to-end -end monitoring, management, how do you do at the cluster level management. So together, we are very complementary to bring the whole solution for an end customer, make it easy to deploy, easy to use. I agree with that completely, and so if you look at like Ethernet, if you have a, a small one gig switch, what do you run on it? Ethernet, you have an 800 gig switch, you run on it. Ethernet, and so you don't have to have one network for the high end, one network for the low end. It's the same network, it's just, it scales perfectly. And that's where the ultra Ethernet comes in, is how do we take the same building blocks and take the super high end and really take it to the next level. We've had conversations with folks over the last couple of days who have made reference to clusters of half a million servers. So, yes. uh, so we're talking about potentially massive environments. Right. So, Connectivity in that space is a non-trivial decision to yes, make. Yes, absolutely. Uh, historically, when you say Ethernet, you're thinking of a, an open standard, you're thinking of a, uh, a common denominator that people can uh, arrive at uh, mm -hmm. for compatibility. How, does that change with Ultra Ethernet? Is the, is, the, is the ethos still there that this is a more open standard than something else that might be out there? Yeah, with Ultra Ethernet, nothing changes. All your open ecosystem and tools stay the same. What you will see is you will see more enhancements to those, like the infrastructure level. There'll be more end-to-end -end kind of, making it more configuration free, so that the users don't have to worry about what is happening at the layer below. So that, that's how I look at it. So Jim, you, you mentioned you know, the idea of you've got, you know, one, one gig Ethernet all the way through the fabric. Is that, right. is that really a key differentiator that, that you're, not, you're not having to instantiate a separate networking technology Absolutely. for your cluster that is completely different than the rest of IT? You know, we talk a lot about inference and training and all of the activities and moving data back and forth. Maintaining two separate kinds of networking sounds more complicated than having a single Absolutely. thing. Is that, I mean, if I were to say, well, all I have is a, all I have is the cluster, and I'm not going to interact with it. I don't have any pre-existing networking. Is then it less clear in terms of the value proposition, or how, how would you? I, I, I think it's just as clear. Okay. Um, I mean, when you have a greenfield, new build out, you're going to use the, the top, the, the latest uh, that is available. You still want to go with Ethernet because today's you know, top product is, you know, three years from now, it's, uh, eh, it's still interesting, but it's not the top product. Well, what do you do with those? You generally take those and repurpose them into another uh, solution. Having the Ethernet being the same, you don't have to go re retrain, retool. You know, you can keep pushing it down the, the chain as you add more top-end equipment on there. And so that's a very powerful, very powerful story. And where do we see, I, I ask this question a lot, I, I think of uh, chasing bottlenecks in, I, in IT broadly as sort of a game of whack-a-mole once you've created, you know, once, uh, once Jericho and Tomahawk have, have bandwidth aplenty, uh, something comes along that saturates that bandwidth. So you know, maybe, maybe for a period of time it's not the network that is the bottleneck, yeah. it becomes something else. Um, what, what, what are we seeing there, Hemel, in terms of where bottlenecks arise? So, depending on different workloads, what we have seen, especially for AI ML, some specific stages within network get congested. 
and if you are an administrator, you would like to know where, where are those congestion points. And today, most of these are manual, but with giving more automated kind of rerouting the traffic, allowing multi-pathing, avoiding the congestion, those things, the really end user will appreciate as well as if you are an administrator, you'll really like it. And to go back to the previous question, the tools and everything are the same. So what they have built today as scripts, they will continue to use like eat tool on Linux. No, no issue, now it just got more enhanced with more and more information that they have using the same set of standard tools. And let's, gi let's give that thing a name, GPUs. Yeah, yeah, you know, sure. All of a sudden, within the last nine months, GPUs, are, they are the discussion, right? And being able to pipe 400 gig to each GPU is critical. Got um, it. So all of a sudden, the demands in the rack have just skyrocketed. And this has to be line rate, has to be reliable, yeah. and that's where Ultra Ethernet really helps out, continue that discussion, and where do we go from there, so. So aren't, aren't, aren't these GPUs like 20 bucks each? So who, care, <laughs> who, cares, who cares if you fully saturate them? That's Something a joke. Like that's a that. joke, folks. Yeah. They are a lot of zeros. They are, <laughs> yeah. they are massively expensive. Yeah. And to your point, if it's underutilized, yeah, big time, that's big issue, big no-no. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. Can we take a step up? I want to understand the power of what you're talking about. What you're helping organizations navigate in terms of the dynamics of AI, ML, networking. What are some of the business outcomes or the impacts that together Dell and Broadcom are helping customers achieve? Whether it's a a hospital or a financial services organization or a manufacturer. I'd love to have any examples of, of real world use cases where the business impact is mm -hmm. dramatic. Yep. Yeah. So, go ahead. Go ahead. Ah, take it. So uh, I'll take a few examples like what we have, everybody loves chat GPT kind oh, of. Oh yeah. Right, so, but you can imagine similar things in other businesses where people may want to build their own training model based on patient data, right? And then doctors want to ask questions to like maybe some common symptoms based on that. So they may want to build their own dedicated secure cluster and they would like to keep their uh, cost of managing pretty much zero, right? And not require too much knowledge about how to deploy this. So that's where we come in, right? We, you provide them the tools, you make it easy for them and let them deploy the application which is the best for them. And yeah. let them focus on their core competencies. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And that's where these large language model uh, solutions come in, where they learn all, you know, they send all this data, like ChatGPT sending the whole internet of data through it, you know, in a, through a matter of days, uh, being able to learn specific to medical or traffic or uh, air flight, air controls. I mean, you know, you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm going to learn the world. No, I'm going to be the best at this area, yeah. whatever your area is. And being able to do that, uh, and that's what and people be want. Very price competitive, yeah. Yeah. So I've got a go-to-market strategy question for you. So from a from a Dell's perspective, um, you know, typically if we think about this, we think about you know what Lisa was talking about. Like, let's talk about the outcomes and the cool things. You get down to the infrastructure layer, and uh, and and there's a saying, nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> We care. But somebody has to. <laughs> somebody has to. Yeah, somebody has, has to. to. Yeah. Somebody yeah. has to. It's okay, okay, maybe you don't care, but somebody has to, otherwise none of it's going to work. Yeah. But when you're working with uh, an, an end user environment, whether it's a service provider or an actual end user in their own data center, how does this conversation of networking come up? Is it part of a package? Is the typical engagement um, we're going to stand up an environment with a certain quantity of capability, right. and it will include n number of Dell servers with whatever components are inside, and this is going to be the fabric that attaches all of them, and then and the entire thing goes in. Is, is, is that more the conversation? You're, you're not going yeah. in specifically having, right. you know, sadly, you're not having specifically networking questions all the time. I mean, so, it depends on the what the customer's asking for. We do have plenty of very specific pure play networking solutions, but that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about, hey, I have a, I have a problem to solve. You know, Dell, help me. Uh, we come in and we specialize in compute, connectivity, which is our storage, our power storage line, and storage as well, and all the connectivity, all the cables and optics. We bring the whole thing to bear. So um, we come in, we're specialists in that because we're, you know, we have so many ways, so many ways you can um, solve problems. Right. Yeah, you know, you know, one of one of your peers actually at Broadcom was on earlier today, and she mentioned uh, a, a, a company that actually works with Dell, Scalers AI, mm -hmm. and uh, and and she was saying that standing up the cluster 
took longer than the training of the model in this one instance. Oh, and yeah. people, people, people take that for granted yeah. right, that that process is going to be simple. We definitely have services that specialize in how to get that right so that it's productive immediately. You don't want to have, well just go figure it out. Three months later I still don't get, how do, how do you connect to unwire this? No, you want to bring in the specialists, they know what they're doing, they get it up immediately, and then you know, things are humming along. So, very important. I, I will, you also, sorry, did you tell yeah. me? No, you, no, no. You kind of led me in a direction there. Really, one of the things that Dell specializes in is kind of the open flavor. Okay, so open networking, open AI. Uh, so we are not just only having one GPU solution. So yeah, we, we work closely with NVIDIA for their GPU. We work closely with AMD for the MI300X. We work closely with Intel for the Gaudi line. You know, we want to be able to have a full array so that when customers come, let's face it, every supplier goes through, oh, I'm out of that. Well, we got several other options for you. You know, if, you, if timeline is your number one criteria, we're there and we're ready. And the networking and that infrastructure is the same. You know, it's just the server uh, and the, the GPU, it will, there'll be a tweak there. So. Um, that's something that where we really excel as well. And you're cool and with that because I think those are all Broadcom customers that he just mentioned. <laughs> right. Not only with that, <laughs> that's true, but I was also going to add, we follow the same spirit, like what Jim mentioned is very important, that for our networking, we don't tie ourselves specific to one GPU architecture. We can work with any accelerator, and that's why with Linux community, there's whole infrastructure that's being created which allows Next to work with any peer device directly transfer data in and out of peer memory. That's what this GPU computes, large set of data. NICs are being moving the data. So that open ecosystem really works and then you really have end-to-end -end networking solution that way, without really worrying about specific architecture. Without worrying about specific architecture, how do you help customers, and this is a marketing term, future-proof, but I always love to unpack and understand, well, how do you actually deliver that? But as, as AI and ML networking technologies, the landscape will continue to evolve, how does Dell and Broadcom together help organizations future-proof their environment so that they can continue to deliver at the speed and probably faster as the days go by yeah. that they need to? So, Go ahead. Go, go ahead. <laughs> we, we are both Tag anxious. We're both excited. <laughs> we're both I want both excited. of your answers. Jim, right, we'll start I'm with you. Go. All right, so this is where the, the discussion about Ethernet comes back, right in our face. And so here's where having uh, an infrastructure that is not tied to one specific vendor is critical. If you have a, uh, a networking that only you can only get it from one, one player, then you're locked, right? Um, and so with Ethernet, and this is where, where Dell is super excited, you know, you can buy Dell today if you need to buy somebody else tomorrow to plug into ours, well Ethernet is Ethernet. And um, we relish that fact. It also keeps us competitive, keeps us humble, you know, because we know that we have to continue to ex excel at what we do and provide excellent service. And so you can't get complacent. Go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's great. Jack, you're it. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things Dell and Broadcom, we have been talking a lot about this, is to, for end customer, build reference architecture. And depending on different customer needs, we can say, hey, if, if your model is not going to be more than this, a single stage fabric is good for you. Two stage fabric for your future, this is how it will look like. So, if you show them that path, that they can deploy something now and yeah. we can help them scale. That really helps them and having that reference architecture, proven architecture, really makes them confident in our solution. Keep confidence, keyword, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I was just going to say, I've got, I've got I, I know we're uh, getting close to wrapping, but I've got one quick, one, sure. I've got one quick one, you've got time, for as much, you have as much time as you want, <laughs> of course. Hey, hey um, I'm in the driver's seat exactly, here. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so, a year from now, we're back here, we're back together, what would you like to be talking about that hasn't reached maturity yet today? What would you like, where, where would you like us to be a year from now? Or, crazy prediction for something that we have no idea we'd be talking about a year from now then. Hemel, what do you think? I actually would like. One year. One year from now, I would like to talk about how far we have progressed in the enhancements I was talking about. Be more concrete about the benefits of those. Okay. So. What do you I, think? I'd piggybacking on that. I mean, this year it's all about 400 gig. Next year it will be about 800 gig. Real deployed in, in vast numbers, that's what we'll be talking about, guaranteed. So I look forward to that discussion. 
All right, well, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Having this insightful educational discussion with us today. The show and tell was awesome, thank you. <laughs> And thanks Thank to our crew for capturing that because we did forget <laughs> to tell you that we were going to do that. But guys, you have to come back because I think we're just scratching sure. the surface here, this fast moving environment, but what Dell and Broadcom are doing together, better together is, it's not strong enough of a, of a statement about what I see from the ecosystem together. It's so. not one plus one, it's one times 10 kind of a <laughs> one times exponential, 10. yeah. New math, I like it. New math. Gentlemen, thank you again for thank your time, you. we appreciate thank it. You very much. We'll see you next year. Thank you. Or maybe sooner. Hi. All right, for our guests and for Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE's live coverage of Supercomputing 23. We're going to be back with our next guest after a short break, so we'll see you then. Walk the dog, get some coffee, get some water. We'll see you soon.